Hello, hello. Good evening. Happy Wednesday, guys. How are you? It's Wednesday, right? <laughs> hello. Hi, Carla. How are you? Yeah. How, was, how was your day? Full of traffic. <laughs> I hate traffic on the, on Wednesday. Is the word. <laughs> no, I, in my in my case, uh, in the office. Uh huh. Uh, it's near my house. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. <laughs> do you do you go just by walking? Yes, about ten minutes. That's so nice. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I would like to be near my work, but <laughs> if I could save the traffic. Today I went out of I left my house at five in the at five thirty in the morning. I was supposed to arrive at six and I arrived at six twenty. I was like twenty minutes later. That's impossible. I, I left my house early. But yeah, traffic is getting crazier and crazier. The more we get close. To the closer we get to December, the crazier and crazier it's gonna get. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna deal with it. Hi Emerson. Hi Mayra. Hi Jorge. Hi Wendy. Hi Nelly. How are you? Hi Jose. Hi. Hi Mauricio. How are you? Hi Tisha. I'm fine. And you? Doing great. Doing great. Nice. Okay. So conversation for tonight before we start with the conversation questions that i have for tonight the topic the topic is anger <laughs> those are what we're going to discuss but before we do that um we're gonna review the platform i see that we still have to finish the platform some of us also today is class number 20 which means we just have five more classes the module is 25 classes so we have five classes left tomorrow, Friday, and then, I oh know, we have four classes left. Wait, what day is today? Uh -huh. We have Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and then mon Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, five classes after today. Okay. So just for you to be on top of the platform and that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to check. We're gonna check here and we're gonna go to the homework section. And we're gonna check the homework for week number four. Week uh well, we're gonna check the second homework. Yesterday we saw the first one, right? So tonight we're gonna see homework point uh four point three, which is the second homework for week number four. Okay. And I'm going to show you guys the answer so you can, if you have not completed section four, uh, it right, right now. Yeah. All right. So a software system used to keep record of inventory levels, other sales and deliveries. We call it inventory track. Okay. Replenish a store with fresh stock or supplies. We call it restock. Right? Well, replenish is a restock. Number, number three, we call the time place the time and place where a retail transaction is completed. That's the point of sale or POS. Right? Then number four, items with expiration dates, foliage, right? Spoilage, anything that can go can go bad literally, right? And then on number five, the oldest inventory items recorded as sold first. They call them first in, first out. All right, first in, first out. So those that would be you hit send and you have completed homework number four point three. Okay. In first out. Oh, this is a spoiler. Okay. All right. Once you have done that, we're going to move forward to homework um, 4.5. Can I move already and let the photo or screen? Yes. 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 Y
Marrakesh, no? Yes, teacher. Perfect, okay. So we're moving to homework 4.5, okay? And that one's gonna be, uh, it says select the description with the names of steps to organize an inventory management system. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys which one you're going to select just because I don't want you to have trouble filling out the platform at the end, okay? So number one, you want to record what product was sold, record sales, okay? Number one would be record sales. Number two, we have get all of your product and vendor information information organized and in one place, organize product and vendor information. Number three, do this to your inventory and it will ensure customers and cashiers are not confused about a product's price. Number three is tag and label inventory. Number four, if there is a difference between the order you submitted and the actual inventory delivered. One, receive inventory with speed and accuracy. Number five, incorporate a purchase order system. That would be the first one. Create and submit accurate purchase orders. Okay. All right, you guys, that's gonna be the ones we're gonna check. Tomorrow, Thursday, we'll finish the other two ones that we have for section four, for week four then. And then on Monday or Tuesday, we can do the final exam. So you just finalize the classes. You just come to class on Tuesday and Wednesday, okay? So, and as I was telling you before, we're gonna start with the questions, with the conversation questions. And the topic we have tonight is anger, okay? Anger, which is enojo, <laughs> enojo, rabia, all right? So, and you have very deep questions. <laughs> Do you consider yourself an angry person, right? Are you an angry person? What are you like when you are angry? You know, I have met people in my life that they are like really, really nice when they are not angry, like in normal status. But then when they get angry, they're like, they're like really horrible people or really scary people. <laughs> so it really depends, right? So what are you personally, each of you guys, how do you consider? Personally, I think when I am angry, I'm not a bad person when I am angry. And also I think people don't believe I am angry. So that's a problem. <laughs> but yeah, um. And sometimes I, I have problems. I get like I get angry, but I don't tell people that I am angry. I just swallow the angriness. So that that's not good. Don't do that, people. <laughs> All right. What's the angriest you've ever been? These are just some of examples of the questions you can select. You can select any of these ones. Okay. Um, in my case, the angriest I have ever been was one time. When I was in high school and I was getting off this the the microbus from the school, and then a girl in a bicycle she ran over me. Me <laughs> She ran over me with her bicycle. So I was I was that's the angriest I have ever been, and because I was very angry because she ran over me, I started throwing uh kicks. I started kicking her bicycle. Me a darle patadas a su bicicleta. I started kicking her bicycle because I was angry because she ruined my uniform. So yeah, that's the angriest I have been. <laughs> All right. So you're going to get in groups right now and you're going to discuss this, some of these questions. You can select two or three per person. Okay, You can select two or three questions per person and you can make it a conversation and you, if you have the opportunity to tell a story like the one I just told you, do so right the idea is you get every opportunity to speak the most possible all right so i'm gonna give you guys 10 minutes for the, uh, this question discussion we'll come back and i want to hear your answers what you came up with okay
The rooms are open and you're going to have 10 minutes. Pueden ingresar a las salas que están abiertas. Let's go into the breakout room, please. Ingresemos a la sala. Eduardo, José lo está esperando en la sala 2. Me confirma si va a poder ingresar, Eduardo, por favor. Because I see you are not there.
Okay, we're all back now. And we're going to listen to your answers according to the questions we got on screen, right? So we have room number one. Um, Emerson, I believe you were working with Maida, right? Emerson, Hello. were you with yes, Maida? Yes, Okay, so you guys are room number one, so you can begin. Tell us about which questions you discussed. Uh, we discussed about the question number five and number eight. Mm. And the number five, we consider my person, uh, my personal opinion. I consider myself a person who gets angry easily when I know that the people are lying to me, but I prefer to be quiet and let them realize their mistakes on their own. All right, <laughs> good technique. Yeah, in my case, um, when I was uh, younger, if I stay angry for a long time, um, sometimes I angry with my boyfriend. <laughs> Um, for small things like um, you see another girl or something like like that. Um, but now I I make happy um, fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you only stay angry for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. What else? And the next question we discussed is the number eight. What made you angry about mother life? I tell Emerson uh, one thing, um, one thing that annoyed me lately is uh, about raising children because many parents tolerate many things for the children. For example, yesterday I saw a little boy who was making a mess in the office where I work and their father was next to him and didn't say anything. And the, oh, and the yeah. boy make a, a, a lot of a mess in, in a food, lot of <laughs> food in the in the sillones, how do you say sillones? On the, on the sofa. Yes, on the sofa. All right. And, and he don't say nothing. He didn't you know, say anything. He didn't say nothing. And I, <laughs> I really angry in that moment. Yeah, I can totally see that. <laughs> I see your point, Maida. What about you, Emerson? Well, one thing that um, one thing that doesn't make me angry on a day is I believe that the the person believe that always have the reason about the occasions. That, that they are always right. Oh, yeah. That's not okay. Peaceful. All right. I wanna congratulate you guys. That was really good. Mayra, specifically, you did the extra mile and you even incorporated a story, right? A personal story. So that is a very important point. Um, when you're answering questions in interviews, especially job interviews, try to make your answers. And this, I have told you this since day one. Try to make your answers as long as possible, right? If you give short answers to your interviewer, it gives a bad signal, right? Like, mm, probably this person needs more vocabulary or they need more practice. That's why they are giving me short answers. So whenever you're answering this type of random questions, try to give as long um, as possible type of answers, right? And like in the case, um, Emerson mentioned in the beginning, when I get angry with my family, I don't tell them. I let them figure it out, right? What they did wrong. Um, and then Maya mentioned the stories so incorporated. So that made it sound 
Very natural. It made it sound like you were conversating with me and not just answering a question, right? So very good job, Emerson Maida. Very good. Okay. So now we're going to go with room number two. And room number two, we have Eduardo Magaña and Jose Romero. Hello, hello. Hello, give a minute. Right. A second, only a second. Uh -huh. Okay. Emerson, I have a question. Is there anything positive about getting angry? <clears throat> uh, actually, my friend, I, I, I am not considering myself an angry person, but I just try to be friendly and while I would like to be a kind person with any people. So for the reason, I think uh, you need to demonstrate in some occasion, uh, be angry because it's really important when you uh, feel annoying or you don't feel uh, really good in a position. For example, if it's a friend or a, a co-worker tells you that something that you don't feel uh, good, you need to demonstrate that you don't like to to, for example, uh, about comments about you or about anything that you, that you, so in this case, you need to, to be angry and try to say, for example, okay, don't, don't tell me that kind of words. I don't like to, to make these kinds of, of, of words using in, in, with you and me. And so you need to demonstrate you are a, a kind person in some occasion, but absolutely when you need to feel angry and try to be very polite and a responsible person, you need to be angry. But I think it's possible when you using in the in the right way. When you okay. feel annoying in something, you need to to demonstrate that you don't like something, but you you using the, the right words. But for example, you say uh, in a polite way, try to talk with uh, with someone. Okay, I don't like to do that, something like that. But the other person understands that. You need to be uh, uh, angry in that position. So I think mm. it's there is a positive a positive about getting angry because you need to be uh, friendly, and but the other person don't want to understand. You need to to change your your feeling. What about you, my friend? And uh, tell me what the angriest you have ever been. Oh, can you hear me? Okay, go ahead. What's, what's the angriest you have ever been? Well, as I told you in the in the web. I remember a bad experience that I have with a mayor from any town from La Libertad. I remember I was I was hiding for tax assistance for a private person. So I remember I went to the main and I start to talk with the mayor. Uh, as soon the meeting started, I was police. I was kindless person but the the mayor was was really a, a stupid and dumb person because he started to say things like uh, i am the mayor here and i am the boss and i decided what happened here and what doesn't happen here it without without respect the 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 jurisprudence and the legal doctrine so i remember that was a really bad experience because he was talking without from the foundation and he doesn't have nothing about technical things about the work so he believed himself to be a person about the law he said that he is the mayor and that's it all and so i remember that i said i have to go here because you are talking so dumb and so stupid and if I still here, you're going to win this conversation for experience because you move on that situation and I don't move here. And so I remember I lived the, this meeting, but it was awful experience. And that's it. All right. So Eduardo, Jose, I like that you both have different styles of conversating. If you notice, Eduardo is more like putting uh, general examples, right? And he was saying, like, it's not good to be angry, but sometimes you got to be angry, <laughs> depending on the situation, to be taken seriously. 
But then in your case, you went very specific with the direct experience, right? And you use the vocabulary, the grammar, and the correct tenses in past, right? And it was very, very obvious that you were expressing not, you were not reading or inventing, you were literally conversating, right? So very good job to both of you guys. Very fluent, very natural, that part. So nice. So we're gonna move on. We're gonna listen to room number three right now. And we have the conversation for Jorge Antonio and Carla Sofia. Go ahead, guys. Hello, Jorge. Uh, are you an angry person? Yes, um, I think that is part of me or my personality. In the first question, when you ask, um, what is the what what spring? What spring? Yes. In the first question, say. What springs to mind when you hear the word anger? The word anger, I say uh, me and the mirror. Yeah, and um, I don't know. Uh, I think that my situation or my work uh, is very stressful, and I think the um, the different situation in the day by day uh, make a uh, a little bit. Uh, angry every day and you are you an angry person I think I I, I am angry person when I don't eat <laughs> because I, I I don't know why but when I can't uh, eat for any problem uh, in the hour, uh, uh, all all uh, make me feel angry. <laughs> okay, um, I I I think uh, for me it's more difficult in my in my work. Uh, I try when I stay in my home, I try to relax, but sometimes, well, I don't know, I different, uh, that different situation with my shy, for example, when they doesn't have a, a homework or I don't know, but well, it's uh, a little bit, I try to, to my hunger uh, for a few minutes, yes? In my work, I try to relax all the time because for me, it's no, 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 it's no good. Yes. Um, you can seek uh, if you uh, during a long time hungry. Other question is what are you like when you are angry? Um, no, I, I don't know. I need the uh, seeing the mirror, but I I well the people say uh, that when I I was hungry, my my uh, in my face uh, they uh, can see um, the different expression or in my eyes, for example, I don't know, but. Uh, I can I can see in this moment. Yes, uh, in my case, I feel like a gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Uh, maybe, uh, and one, once on on a time, uh, mm -hmm. I angry. I feel very angry yeah and i feel my face hot and uh, and maybe <laughs> turning red ah yes and, and when you and when you get get angry do you stay angry for a long time yes e m i feel head head, 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 head. What yes. do you say, 
head. Headache. And I I oh. think it's it's not good for my uh <laughs> for your health. No, <laughs> yes, for yeah. my health. Yes, no, I don't. Uh, in my case, no. In my case, I try to make my hunger last a, a short time because when I ask you, um, you can seek for your health is very bad. Right. That's all. <laughs> try to control. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, Jorge, Carla. I like that this one was more like the conversational, right, between you two not necessarily talking to us talking but talking between you you two it was really fluent i like that um Jorge, i noticed that you were saying the word you you were not saying the word angry you were saying hangry and, uh, oh. <laughs> okay yeah and the thing is that you see usually they are very similar right we have angry and we have hungry okay right which are totally different things. Angry is like getting yes. mad and has to hungry to be to be um as to be hambriento. Okay. Si <laughs> sí existe, sí existe la palabra hangry. But, but when it? when I when I um when I have hungry I, I am I, I, yes when I, I am I um well Carla says uh, uh, a few minutes when I need to eat uh, mm -hmm. I change my personality. I, yes, yes, yes. I change my personality. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I said I was going to mention that there is a word that is called hangry. It's not official. It doesn't exist officially, but it's used to refer to a combination of being angry because you're hungry, right? Hangry, okay. no es una palabra oficial, pero si se usa, sí la van a escuchar. En, en bastante en general porque es la combinación de angry and hungry right you get angry when you're hungry okay. so yeah you could use it right just okay. but it's very specific to that scenario when you get angry because you're hungry right mm -hmm. very good job carla jorge thank you and thank now you. we're gonna listen to mauricio velasquez and nelly lilibet go ahead Okay. Um, can I can I share the screen? Please? Yeah, give me just a moment. Let me know if it lets you share. No. Or if it no, okay, bear with me. Just a moment. Try now, please. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good evening, Nelly. How are you? I'm pretty good, thanks. How about you? I, I good too. Nelly, I have a question for you. Tell me. What, what are you like when you are angry? It's a good question, Maurice. Um, it depends on the situation that causes my anger. But I'm not at all troublesome person, and I like to keep things peaceful. By the way, I have a doubt about that. What made you angry about modern life? Uh huh. Uh, there are many things such as injuries, injuries, mistreatment, and abuse. In your case, when you get ang angry, do you stay angry for a long time? It depends on the reason for the problem. If it isn't too big or bad, I like things to be uh, fixed quickly. But if it's something serious, I prefer to go away and have no more contact for some time. Maurice, uh, do you think anger has a color? What color it is it? Uh, um, the anger 
I consider that thing as no color. I think no color. Only senti sentiment sentimental bar. Okay, only feelings. Okay, thank only. you, Marcus. Thank you, Nelly. All right, very good. I like that your conversation was controlled, but it was very well explained. Each of the answers was very well developed. <laughs> so that's really good, Nelly, Mauricio, thank you. Um, Mayra was asking, what does it mean? Um, the question, what color is angry? <laughs> um what color is anger it's here uh, question number seven right and this is it's like you know like in psychology you give colors to feelings for example if you think about peace it can be blue or it can be white right peace the white flag for peace right but usually anger is represented with red color or orange color <laughs> the color yeah. of anger right so yes, Mayra, that's or what they black. were asking. Or black, <laughs> or black and red. <laughs> the bad fatal combination. So yeah, that's what they were talking about in that in that question specific. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna take attendance before I forget. And just bear with me. Um make sure you say you're uh, here or present whenever you listen to your name, please. Okay, we have Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present. Thank you, Dairo Jonathan Fuentes, Eduardo Antonio Magaña, Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present. Thank you, Fátima Gabriela Loza, Jonathan Jose González. Present. Miss. Thank you, Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present. Thank you, José Bernardo López. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you, Jose Cesar Lemo. Juan Carlos Herrera Delgado. Juan Jose Herrera Alvarenga. Present. Thank you, Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you, Kenia Elizabeth Rodriguez. Present, teacher. Thank you, Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you, Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you, Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you, Sandra Abigail Bonilla. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present, teacher. Thank you. All right, you guys, we're going to go to the student panel and we're going to take this exercise we have in here. All right, this is on page 29, okay? Page 29, this is about building a vocabulary, right? So we have these ones in here. We have inbound processes, layout and plotting, speaking, backing, shipping, and managing recurring, okay? So we have six different ones. I'm going to need volunteers. Each of you is going to read first. You read the description, and then you select one of the labels, okay? Depending on the description, you select the label, okay? So we, need, we have a space for six volunteers. Raise your hand to participate, please. You just have to read literally what you have, one, two, three, like that. Carla, help us with number one, please. And then Mayra, help us with number two, please. Eduardo, help us with number three. Can you? Can you help us with number three, Eduardo? Are you there, Eduardo? <laughs> okay, can you help us with number three instead of Eduardo, please? I'm willing to try it. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We have time. And then for number four, if you could help us, Mauricio, with okay. number four, please. Number five, um, Emerson, please help us with that one. And if you can, Nelly, please help us with number six, okay? Let's, go, let's begin. Number one. 
uh, your orders must be packed in the right packaging, complete with a current content slip and add to a delivery manifest to this page. For this purpose. All right, so your orders must be packed in the right packaging, okay? And then complete with an accurate content slip. Slip is like a page, right? With a, como una página, una lista, right? With the, explaining what is the content. And add it to a delivery manifest for this much. What do you think is this one? I think, Carla, this is shipping. I think this, because it says, this has to be packed and then ready to manifest for this much. So in my opinion, it could be shipping, okay? Or it could be packing, we will see, okay? Let's read number two, please, Maya. Okay. This could need to be unloaded and then check it off against the original order and the information has to be long, long, Again, look, uh, mm -hmm. load a case, the customer account. Okay. So, unloaded. Primero tienen que ser descargados. They, have, they need to be unloaded. And then check off against the original order, right? Like, this is the list and this is the, the goods, right? You have to see that they are matching. And information has to be locked against the customer's account. What do you think that one is? I think, I think, I'm not sure, that is inbound process. Inbound process of ingreso, right? Se descargan los bienes, luego se chequean contra lista y se ponen en la cuenta de cliente. That's what I think. What do you, do you think, Carla? Mayra? Yes, I... I, I you was agree? Thinking, yes, I agree. Right. For, for It's uh, the first step, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, in my process. Correct. Thank you. Let's go with number three, guys, please. Okay. Items need to be checked and lodged as they receive it and put away in the correct bins or packet for dispatch without further store. Packing. Items need to be checked and locked in the correct bin. Yeah, because that's packed for this much. So yeah, that one would be packing, correct. Okay. Let's see number four, please. Okay. Yes. Is it must be easy for you speaker to find it. I dare journey time between items and between order should be minimized. Minimize. 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 Mm -hmm. um, picking, I think. Yeah, I think so too. All right. Let's go with number five. Fast moving items need to near be to near the front of the warehouse. Items that are often bought together need to be close to each other. Items that easily are mistaken for each other should be separated. I think it's the managing returns. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fast moving items need to be in the front of the warehouse. Items that are often bought together need to be close to each other. I think number five is layout and slotting. Layout is como se dispone la disposición de algo, right? So in this case, they are talking like in groups, right? Uh, items that are, that are fast move fast, we put it in one area. Items that usually buy together, we're putting in a different area. 
so las estamos disponiendo, las estamos poniendo en disposición, right? So I think that one is lay out and slotting, okay? Laying it out and slotting. And then we have number six, please. The right orders must be on the right vehicle at the right time with the right delivery manifest. Is shipping. Yeah, the right orders must be on the right vehicle at the right time. Yeah, that one's probably shipping. Exactly. So it makes more sense, right? So very good. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Great job on that one. So listen, for the next activity, you're going to work in pairs and you have to create, we're doing exercise on eight, okay? It says create a basic report detailing the results of hypothetical or invented analysis <laughs> of issues related to the free short warehouse process in the chart X, the example seven. Okay. Include the corresponding suggestions to solve this issue. And if you can integrate transitions of results. Okay. So basically, you're going, one of you is going to be talking to the boss or to the supervisor and it's going to mention, okay, we did an analysis of issues in the warehouse. We have this problem, we have this problem, we have this problem in the warehouse, okay? And you can use this, you can use, we have problems with the layout and the slotting, for example, right? We have problems with the layout because the products that are fast moving, we put them separate, and so we can never find them at the right time. So we're having problems with that. Or the shipping, we're having problems because the shipping address, the delivery address, usually there are mistakes in the system, etc. So we usually have to call the customer and confirm. So that's extra work, okay? So what you're going to do is that you're going to invent an analysis using some of these issues. This is one issue that is happening in the warehouse and explain why how is it happening, right? What is creating, what problems is creating? It, we're having these problems or these problems. And then you're going to include the suggestions to solve this issue, right? Um, so it's not just about mentioning the problem, you have to give solutions to them, what you suggest to do to fix them, okay? You can use the problems that you see here, but you can also invent other problems that can happen in a warehouse, right? So for this one, you're gonna be working in the breakout rooms and you're gonna have 15 minutes, okay? So just bear with me for a moment. All right, the rooms are gonna be open right now and you're gonna have 15 minutes to work on this hypothetical analysis and suggestion. Make it a conversation, right? Try to make it a conversation if possible. Go ahead, pueden ingresar a la sala, tienen 15 minutos. Teacher. Teacher. Yes. Teacher, me voy a tener que ausentar de la clase porque tengo una emergencia con mi hermana, oiga. Okay. La, la llevamos para el hospital ahorita. De acuerdo, Wendy. Que le que bien me todo. Salir, ajá, me voy a salir de la clase, señor. De acuerdo. Gracias. Que le vaya bien, Wendy. Cuídese. Gracias. Gracias.
Finally, what happened? You were working with Eduardo, right? Hello. What Estaba go, con una muchacha cerquita y se, sal, y se salió. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Corneli, ahorita. Uh, room 5. Tenemos, tenemos que crear una conversación de lo, de lo, del cuadro, ¿verdad? Sí, o tienen que utilizar, o es como van a inventar un análisis que ya hicieron y encontraron estos problemas en el warehouse. Pueden uh -huh. usar lo que acabamos de usar en la lista. Y decir, uh -huh. cómo, ¿qué proponen ustedes para solucionar? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's uh -huh. both the problem and the solution that you suggest. Ok. okay. Uh, ya va ingresando Nelly, so just a moment, ok? Ok.
Okay, not the world, but let's listen to those issues, reports, and suggestions for improvement. So let's begin with room number one. And we have Jose Romero and Mauricio Velasco, right? You can go ahead. <laughs> okay. In our company, there are a number of problems regarding to inventory system. Number one, badly packaged product as a consequence damaged product. When the product is received, we do not have a checklist. As a result, we don't know what we have. When the product is received, we do not and we do not register the entry of the product. Therefore, we do not we don't know what we have found, what we have in the quantity of the inventory. As a consequence, we cannot have an optimal location of the product. Number four, misplaced product are placed, they find spaces, resulting in damage and lost product. Warehouse layout is important. As a result, we have the product in the right place. If you are trying a delivery and you are not sure about the address, please don't do it because as a result, you can lose your money and your product. So my partner is going to, to read the other ones. Uh, okay. Is if an item move quickly, is not at hand for quick and easy dispatch resulting in light dispatch. And not using appropriate vehicle or its product result as a result in loss of space and time. When I have a when I have a, a good managed return as a resort, I know I know we know more a specific product only. All right, yeah. very specific and very detailed report. It's not given on the nature of the problem. You mentioned what was happening, what was causing the problems, and what were the consequences, and then you will. Okay. We have Emerson Ulises and Mayra Bella. Go ahead, guys, please. Well, um... The hypothetic situation uh, talking about with Mayra is uh, the when when the company received the items at at the time to do the inspection, we realized that the product has a uh, issue with the level identification. The the, the description does those, those product doesn't according with the spe specification. For this reason, we ask to reply to send us the level with the correct codes to able to change change that. Right. That's all. Okay, so it's just one one issue, just one problem. <laughs> okay, yeah. but you provided the solution and you used the result transition, so that's good. Thank you, Emerson. <laughs> Might yeah. also. Okay, we're now going to listen to room number four. Here we have Jorge Antonio and Carla Sofina. Go ahead, please. Well, teacher, we um try to simulate um not a problem, uh, a different situation, or try to simulate if we uh, manage a, a warehouse. Uh, I we try to explain the different steps for the warehouse when you receive the product, 
storage the product and deliver the product. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, I explained the first, no, Carla explained the first step and I continue. Okay, uh, I should, we choose a warehouse of access, accessories. Uh, first step in the process is receive the product. Uh, we need the we need a packing list for the product to receive. Uh, then check and pick all the product from the packing list and put in order the warehouse in the current bin for a storage. I think is the is that is about receive the product for stores the the warehouse. Yes, the, this is how the, the first step then when we have the different product in the warehouse, the uh, continues with the, uh, what is the steps for the delivery or shipping the products. And uh, the different steps, uh, the first one is the receive an order for uh, our one customer, for example. Uh, them uh, search and pick in the different products for the this order, separate into categories and pack the products for the these categories. And when the, the all products is are ready, uh, we need to create a manifest for different products uh, that ready to ship. And finally, uh, we shipping the this order for a customer. All right, I like that it's very specific step by step. This is, um, this is what we call a, like a SOP, right? Like a system operations manual, okay. right? Basically, so very good. It was very detailed and it was very well explained. Thank you, room number four, Carlin Jorge. Okay, and now we're going to listen okay. to last room. We have Eduardo Magaña and Nelly Lili. Go ahead, guys, please. Mm -hmm. um, hi, Eduardo. I have a problem because uh, we have been uh, delivered from tomorrow, but we don't find um, the product because the barcode is wrong. Okay, it's a serious problem. Uh, we need to, to find the product uh, as soon as possible. Uh, because uh, the our company uh, the main feature is is gonna make the delivery in the right way in the right time and in the right address so i need to 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 find the product right now so i will try to look in my system tell me what was the product the little black test okay absolutely i will try to look in my system and you need to talk with a person a responsible person uh, about it uh the person was um Enrique <laughs> Enrique uh to the store the king of dresses <clears throat> okay absolutely uh we need to resolve the problem Asa um I need to make a, a meet with, with him and we need to to send the pro to find the product right now so try to talk with him and we need to get a, meeting, a serious meeting with him, okay? Yes, um, I'm the fan with him right now. And he told me that uh, they send the product to the wrong direction and they will send tomorrow in the morning and we receive the product um, tomorrow in the afternoon. Okay, absolutely, it's a serious problem. We need to be careful with the labeling barco. So for the reason I I proposed for you, and you need to fight the problem and in the best way. But when we need to make the delivery tomorrow, okay? And we need a serious meeting with him. Thank you for for letting me letting me know, and I hope uh, fix the problem. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right, very good conversation. I like that it was very fluent, Nelly and Eduardo. Also, you were 
again, um, in your own version, you mentioned what was the issue, what this person was doing, what was causing, and then you suggested the method of action to solve the problem, right? <laughs> so very good job, very well coordinated and explained. All right, so now we're going to watch a video, guys. And this is going to be a case study about warehouse optimization, all right? I'm gonna share the screen with you. And we're gonna watch it twice. Remember, we always watch videos twice at least. First time we go, it's looking for vocabulary mostly in case that there is vocabulary that we don't know. If there isn't, then we go straight to context, okay? So we're gonna watch it the first time, looking for a vocabulary right now. Sequin Consumer Products is probably a brand name that a lot of people don't know. You probably know us better by our brand names that we sell to retail. Reese Hitches, Reese Towing Products, Highland Cargo Management and Tie Down Products. That's who we sell. Sequin recently worked with Associated, a provider of integrated supply chain solutions to analyze their distribution operations. Their goal was to uncover opportunities to optimize their warehouse in South Bend, Indiana. As a result of their engineering and design study, Associated provided Sequent with alternatives that would result in improved efficiencies and reduced operating costs. Based on these recommendations, Sequent opted to reconfigure their storage layout, adjust their fleet mix, and reduce process bottlenecks through the use of automation to optimize their fulfillment operation. We had a feeling that the fleet makeup would change, uh, but when we sat down with the engineering team and laid out for them where our primary pick faces were, uh, we changed the composition uh, primarily away from order pickers to single walkie riders. We had noticed that uh, we were spending too much time in the air picking, so we moved everything to the floor for pick face. Obviously a single walkie is a less expensive piece of equipment to acquire than a, a man up order picker is. Uh, it also tends to be faster and there's less safety concerns operating with that piece of equipment. So there were some big changes there. Um, but we also uh, have a lot of double deep high storage in this building and uh, the, the Raymond Double Deep Reach just is a really superior product for us, especially with the cameras and especially with the, um, the laser beam sight indicators for the, for the operators. We ended up with a fleet of 29 lifts, and it was a mixture of, of different products, single walkies, double walkies, order pickers, double deep reach trucks, uh, three wheel, forklifts, and an internal combustion truck. In addition to the process enhancement solutions, Associated recommended fleet management to further improve their truck and operator performance. The fleet is now equipped with the industry's most advanced fleet optimization tool, Raymond's iWarehouse. This system allows Sequin to operate with greater effectiveness and cost efficiency by providing them with real-time visibility to numerous data points. They can now evaluate and immediately act upon information that directly results in operational and bottom line improvements. Given Sequin's focus on sustainability, they also chose to employ opportunity charging for lift truck batteries, replacing a former battery charging system. Certainly in any warehouse operation, battery charging and changing is a big concern. Um, you have the safety concern of maintaining a battery room, of potential spills, of potential dropping a battery, of damaging a battery coming in or out of a piece of equipment, and just the floor space that a battery room ties up, plus the cost of the batteries. So with using the opportunity charging, every truck has one battery in it. Uh, we charge at uh, lunch times and we charge between shifts but uh, we've not had to change a battery here since early 2010. Another major solution provided by Associated is an extendable conveying system that allows Sequin to save additional labor costs by improving the efficiency in the unloading of import containers in receiving. We spend a lot of time with labor inside of those containers. At certain times of the year that's not so horrible, but when it's extremely hot out or extremely cold out, it really becomes a a quality of life issue for our people, plus we need to turn those containers relatively quickly. So uh, the Associated Engineering team put together a powered receiving conveyor solution for us that we installed this year and we've noticed uh, about a 30 percent decrease in unloading time both in labor and in time in the door for a hand unloaded container. The results of the integrated solutions Associated provided have helped Sequent to optimize their storage and order fulfillment operations. 
our first year payback was in the tens of thousands of dollars, and that's a composition of between lease, uh, ongoing maintenance for the equipment, and charging for the equipment. So we've, we've experienced a very nice savings. The folks from Associated have been a really good team to work with. Uh, they really listen a lot to us. They bring in innovative solutions. Uh, they take us out on field trips. Uh, they really just spend time working with us to make sure that we're happy and that we're um, listened to. All right, so if you notice this video, I didn't play the subtitles, right? So this was mostly about you paying attention to what was going on. Now, let me ask you, would you like to watch it again with subtitles or do you want to watch it again without them? And you just prepare your comments. We can put them or we can take them out as you prefer. Again, please. All right. This time we're going to watch them with subtitles just to be sure, right? Um, requirements, everyone has to prepare a comment, okay? Remember, this is a warehouse optimization case study. So they are telling you about a specific company that they were having problems with the warehouse and what they did to fix it and how's that going, right? So let's, that's what we want to hear about in the end, about the, in the comment, okay? Sequent Consumer Products is probably a brand name that a lot of people don't know. You probably know us better by our brand names that we sell to retail. Reese Hitches, Reese Towing Products, Highland Cargo Management and Tie-Down Products. That's who we sell. Sequent recently worked with Associated, a provider of integrated supply chain solutions to analyze their distribution operations. Their goal was to uncover opportunities to optimize their warehouse in South Bend, Indiana. As a result of their engineering and design study, Associated provided Sequent with alternatives that would result in improved efficiencies and reduced operating costs. Based on these recommendations, Sequent opted to reconfigure their storage layout, adjust their fleet mix, and reduce process bottlenecks through the use of automation to optimize their fulfillment operation. We had a feeling that the fleet makeup would change, uh, but when we sat down with the engineering team and laid out for them where our primary pick faces were, uh, we changed the composition uh, primarily away from order pickers to single walkie riders. We had noticed that uh, we were spending too much time in the air picking, so we moved everything to the floor for pick face. Obviously, a single walkie is a less expensive piece of equipment to acquire than a, a man-up order picker is. Uh, it also tends to be faster and there's less safety concerns operating with that piece of equipment. So there were some big changes there. Um, but we also uh, have a lot of double deep high storage in this building and uh, the, the Raymond Double Deep Reach just is a really superior product for us, especially with the cameras and especially with the, um, the laser beam sight indicators for the, for the operators. We ended up with a fleet of 29 lifts and it was a mixture of, of different products, single walkies, double walkies, order pickers, double deep reach trucks, uh, three wheel, forklifts, and an internal combustion truck. In addition to the process enhancement solutions, Associated recommended fleet management to further improve their truck and operator performance. The fleet is now equipped with the industry's most advanced fleet optimization tool, Raymond's iWarehouse. This system allows Sequin to operate with greater effectiveness and cost efficiency by providing them with real-time visibility to numerous data points. They can now evaluate and immediately act upon information that directly results in operational and bottom line improvements. Given Sequin's focus on sustainability, they also chose to employ opportunity charging for lift truck batteries, replacing a former battery charging system. Certainly in any warehouse operation, battery charging and changing is a big concern. Um, you have the safety concern of maintaining a battery room, of potential spills, of potential dropping a battery, of damaging a battery coming in or out of a piece of equipment, and just the floor space that a battery room ties up, plus the cost of the batteries. So with using the opportunity charging, every truck has one battery in it. Uh, we charge at uh, lunch times and we charge between shifts but uh, we've not had to change a battery here since early 2010. Another major solution provided by Associated 
is an extendable conveying system that allows Sequin to save additional labor costs by improving the efficiency in the unloading of import containers in receiving. We spend a lot of time with labor inside of those containers. At certain times of the year that's not so horrible, but when it's extremely hot out or extremely cold out, it really becomes a, a quality of life issue for our people. Plus, we need to turn those containers relatively quickly. So uh, the associated engineering team put together a powered receiving conveyor solution for us that we installed this year. And we've noticed uh, about a 30% decrease in unloading time, both in labor and in time in the door for a hand unloaded container. The results of the integrated solutions associated provided have helped Sequin to optimize their storage and order fulfillment operations. Our first year payback was in the tens of thousands of dollars, and that's a composition of between lease, uh, ongoing maintenance for the equipment, and charging for the equipment. So we've, we've experienced a very nice savings. The folks from Associated have been a really good team to work with. Uh, they really listen a lot to us. They bring in innovative solutions. Uh, they take us out on field trips. Uh, they really just spend time working with us to make sure that we're happy and that we're um, listened to. Okay, so let me hear your comments. What do you think about it? What is the case of study? What were some of the problems they were having? How did they fix them? Or if you want to start with vocabulary, we can do that also. And then you give me your comments. Uh, Jose, it's not borderline, it's borderline. Borderline means limite. Sounds and sounds similar, borderline. Borderline. And it means limit. Anybody found another word? Pitch. Sorry? Pitches. Pitches. How do you spell it? P. P I T C H. E S. Yes, mm. yes, in echo. I I T C H. Oh, I T C A H. It means, mm, pero mm, no estoy segura que lo haya visto así porque H es comezón oh. o picar. Estar pitch. Pitches. Mm. Tendremos que ver el spelling. I'll, okay, fleet. Fleet, Carla, es una flota. Fleet, fleet es una flota. Yes. Una, o flotillas, creo que les llaman en español. Fulfillment, completo. Fulfillment means completo, right? Proceso completo, fulfillment. Cuando se completa un proceso. Fulfillment. Okay, do you have another one there? Okay, they were talking about conveying systems, single walkie, single speakers, walkie drivers. Forklift is in Montacarga. Sorry, forklift. Okay, then in that case, let me hear your comments. I want to be sure that you understood what you were watching. So the only way we can know that you understood something is by listening to your comments. Who wants to begin? Volunteer. Please tell me that you understood something, people. <laughs>
Okay, so nobody understood anything about the video. This is news to me. <laughs> now, let me see. Do you want to watch it one more time? Maybe to finish preparing your comments. Guys, if you don't give me your answers, I have no way to know. I do not read mine. <laughs> that is not one of my favorites. Me teacher. All right, Jorge. Well, um, in the video, um, we can show what is the different step of process in the warehouse. And not only that receive the product, uh, well, for example, when uh, we show the conversation with Carla. In this video, we can see the different process with the, we talk about uh, the picking, the putting, ordering the beans, and what is the process, for example, when you uh, have a low battery and the forklift, the different forklifts, forklift they use it. How is the uh, form or the process when you use the forklift and put uh, the different products in 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 the beans, and when is uh, the well uh, uh, he tried to explain the different process for the fulfill or uh, in my company uh, is say the replenishment when the we fulfill the different products for example in the warehouse when you have a product uh, any kind of a uh, color or sizes and uh, they have a low inventory we need to um delivery or ship for this size color or product in specifically and uh, they fulfill in their warehouse. Um, well, I don't know if the um, she he shows. Uh, for example, what is the different package or or slip the different mm -hmm. uh, pallet uh, in the product before put in the bins and. She helped with a uh, hip, sorry, he uh, helped with the uh, different uh, kind of forklift uh, for the uh, storage in the warehouse. Exactly. That's what was happening. They were not having just one issue. They were having multiple issues that were solved by the different solutions that warehousing provides. One of them was also the forklift thing and the, and the walkies vehicle. They say they change the the mechanical ones. They change them to battery battery function ones, right? So instead of buying investing in energy, they just recharge. In the same company, they just recharge the the cars. They said they mentioned they even mentioned they do it on sometimes on lunch, sometimes on shift changes, and that has saved them a lot of money. They had not replaced the battery since two thousand and ten. Can you imagine thirteen years? And they don't need to replace batteries, right? So that has saved them a lot of costs and has improved also their availability to pick the things, right? And to pack them and prepare them to ship. Very good, Jorge. That was a very thorough summary that you provided. And apparently you were the only one that got something from this video. Do we have more comments? Oh, it's just Jorge here. I, I think... Uh, the video it's about the process in the warehouse mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the results uh, mm -hmm. and explain to integrate solution and provide mm -hmm. help sequence exactly video. Yeah, they were also talking about safety, right? Convey bigger conveyor belts and the risk because some of the cargo is really high on top. So it makes it very difficult for them. So they installed cameras so that when they are trying to get the cargo off, they can watch where they are going and what they are doing, right? So yes, they were talking about the type of 
for the solutions that are provided, right? For the types of fish. Okay, very well. So now, let me just stop here. And we have, okay, bear with you. I'm gonna share the screen with you. We have the student funnel and we have an exercise here, which is about building vocabulary, all right? So I'm going to ask five of you to read and you're going to select the option that fits the description first, okay? You're going to select that a description that goes better. Okay. So um, Emerson, if you could help me reading number one, please. Eduardo, help me reading number two, please. Nelly, if you could help me reading number three, please. Jose with number four, please. And might I possible if you could help me reading number five, please. Remember, you have to read the sentences and then you have to select the description that goes better, the label. Okay, let's begin, please, Emerson. Okay. This is a method of the delivering goods from the suppliers to the customers directly. Maybe drop shipping. From the supplier to the customer directly. We saw this part, we saw it at the beginning of the module. Do you remember how, what do we call that? There is important word there, directly. It gives you the answer. That is called direct, directly, direct, <laughs> right? Direct shipping. Yeah. Direct. <laughs> 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 so yeah, direct shipping is it's straight from the vendor or from the producer and the, or the supplier directly to the customer, right? They don't use anyone else or any other method. Okay, thank you. Let's read number two, please. Are you able to read number two? Eduardo, are you able to read number two? Where are you, Eduardo? Okay, not in this class. <laughs> Jose, can you help me reading number two, please? Okay. Number two. It is operated as an independent business offering a range of services, such as storage, handling, and transportation on the, base, on the basis of a fixed or variable fee. Mm -hmm. Wow. Independent mm. business. Independent. Range of services, like storage. Drop ship. It could be. We're going to talk about that. Because can... it's direct. All right. And it says they have different services, right? They store, they handle, they do the transportation on the basis of a fixed or for a variable fee, meaning a, a, a set price, right? It can be a set price or a changing type of price, right? You pay them first and they can do these things for you. They can do storage, they can do handling, transportation. I think. It could be contract warehouse, probably, but I'm not sure yet. We'll have to finish reading the other ones, okay? Let's see who was for number three. Okay, um, warehouse. <laughs> Thank you. Warehouse owned by a third party entity. This warehouse provides specialized services in addition to allowing the client to store goods. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> maybe uh, maybe contract borrows. Oh, this word says this is important. Third party entity, right? Owned by a third party entity, for example, it's not a public warehouse, okay? Because it's a third party entity, right? And it says these warehouses provide a specialized services in addition to align the client to store wood. I think this one is a private warehouse because it's owned by a third party, right? It's not owned by the company and it's not owned, let's say, by the government, for example. So I think that one would be private work. Do you agree, guys? Yes. Makes a little bit of sense, right? <laughs> Let's go with number four. Thank you, Nick. And Mayra, could you help us with number four, please, instead? Okay. The retailer doesn't keep gold in stock, but Instead, transfer customer order and shipment detail to the manufacturer. Another retailer or a wholesaler who then ship the goods directly to the customer. To the customer. Mm -hmm. mm. The retailer, or in this case, the seller person, they don't have the goods. They offer the goods and they sell them, but they don't have them in existence. Right. So what they do is that they sell the product online, for example, and then they transfer the, uh, the customer order. If the customer buys, they want to buy two of the product. Mm -hmm. These companies, the retailer, they transfer the order from the customer and the shipment details to the manufacturer or to another retailer or wholesaler. This one is what we call drop shipping. Drop, yes. Mm -hmm. Drop shipping is when I... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I was going to tell drop shipping is when you sell products, but you don't have the product. You don't own them, right? You, basically, it's like you just do the marketing and they sell them, but this, um, this the manufacturer or the wholesaler, they complete all the rest of the process for you, right? So that, that's why it's called drop ship. And then we have number five. Um, I don't know if Carlita could you help us with number five, please? Yes, it is a storage facility that is open to the general public while this kind of warehouse is used by private individuals. They are also used the, by companies of a small and medium size to store their goods safely. Uh, Private warehouse. <laughs> oh, pay attention. It says open to the general public. <laughs> public warehouse. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the public warehouse is the one that is open to the general public. And then the private warehouse is usually one owned by a third party entity, right? So that's basically where the difference is. Okay. So guys, we're gonna stop here with this part. Um, reminders, work on the platform. If you have completed it, that's perfect. But if you have one homework that is maybe 40, 50 or 70, take it again and just, so that you can increase your score to, uh, to 90 or 95 at least, if not the 100, right? Um, today is class number 20. So we have only five classes left tomorrow, Friday, and next week only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, okay? So we have five classes left before we complete the module. Make sure you complete all the tasks in the platform. The final exam, don't worry too much. You can do it on the weekend or we can do it here in the class on Monday or Tuesday because we, we still have class on, on Wednesday too. So just be sure to participate, come, come connect to the class, right? <laughs> you have five more classes. If you have missed, classes the past days make sure you get to 80 percent attendance you still have five more classes don't miss them so that you can increase your attendance rate remember that it's requirement for main support so you can go to the next level all right so let me take attendance please say here or present when you hear your name okay carlos vladimir rodriguez dairo jonathan fuentes 
Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Mm, me. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present. Thank you. Fátima Gabriela Loza. Jonathan José González. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present, you. Thank you. José Bernardo López. Present. Thank you. José Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you. José César Lemo. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera. Juan José Herrera. Present. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenya Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Okay, that's going to be it for tonight. If somebody wants to stay for advisory, you can do so. If not, I hope you have a great day tomorrow, and I'll see you at night for the class. Get some rest. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Miss. Bye-bye. Good night. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow, guys.